In French, it is called Cirque du Soleil, the Circus of the Sun. It is arguably the most visually stunning and extravagantly staged production in the world. Tonight, I go behind closed doors to perform with the men and women who reinvented the circus. Cirque du Soleil started in Bay St. Paul, Quebec in 1982. This innovative group has now grown into one of the most successful theatrical companies in the world. Getting rid of the traditional three rings of a circus and the animal acts, Sir created unique costumes, distinctive makeup, and dramatic staging that produce images never seen in any circus, or anywhere else for that matter. Today they have three worldwide touring companies and three permanent locations. Two are in Las Vegas, Mystere, and O, oh, their first aquatic show. The latest show, La Nuba, will be housed at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Behind closed doors in their Montreal headquarters, Cirque's offices are literally a circus. Administrative windows overlook the rehearsal space. New shows like La Nuba and O oh may take two years or more to create. What began as a troupe of street performers now includes top acrobats and athletes from around the world, all competing for a few coveted jobs. I saw many shows of Cirque and I thought they were so unique and I always thought, where did they take all those ideas, you know, to do crazy stuff and such, so creative. In the most expensive hotel ever built, the Bellagio, in Cirque du Soleil's most expensive theater, and for the first time on primetime television, we were given unprecedented access to the backstage and underwater world of O, oh, Cirque's most elaborate production to date. This is the hottest ticket in Las Vegas and one of the most expensive with seats starting at $90. You are inside the state-of-the-art 1,800-seat auditorium built specifically for Cirque du Soleil's O oh production. The cost? More than $95 million. No other show of this complexity exists anywhere. Their stage is a 1.5 million gallon pool of water. 75 artists perform above, below, and on its surface. On a catwalk 60 feet above the stage, technical director Phil Jordan explained how they do it. A lot of people come in thinking they're going to look into a tank. Yeah. And that's not the case. It's a liquid stage, is the way we like to say it. It appears as though you have people walking on the water. We have <laughs> an elaborate series of stage lifts that are quite remarkable. At one moment, we can have a solid stage, and then another, we can have an entire stage go completely to 25 feet of water. The computerized hydraulic lifts move constantly throughout the show. In fact, the logistics of the entire production seem impossible. The lifts, moving sets, all powered by electricity so very close to water. The dangers involved in this show could be fatal. Um, we are talking loss of life, we're talking loss of limb. In case of a serious accident, there are emergency stop buttons installed backstage, in the pool, and in the control booth. So with the push of a button, they can stop all action instantly. Below the water's surface, there's a whole other world the audience never sees. Twelve of the stagehands are scuba divers working underwater and assisting the artists. For the entire 90-minute show, the performers are in and out, making surprise entrances from beneath the surface. We had many, many lessons under the water, how to use those regulators. And I remember at first they would just go, <gasps> and breathe and hold my breath and I would just hyperventilate like this because it's a second nature for me to hold my breath under the water. But if we want to totally disappear and reappear two minutes later, we need help because we could not do that two shows a night, five times a week. The water is kept at a constant 87 degrees so the artist's muscles are kept warm and won't cramp. There are nine underwater cameras and an underwater speaker system. Alan can talk with his divers throughout the show, while Sylvie helps her team stay synchronized. One, two, three, oh, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Because every performer is in several acts, in the wings, stage managers are waiting to help them out of one costume and into another within seconds. Artists with more time go downstairs to get out of wet costumes, soak their muscles in a jacuzzi, then head back out to the stage at top speed. One of the most spectacular acts in the show is called Bateau, the boat, a ghost ship perched 30 feet above the water. This is the team with whom I'd go behind closed doors. It's a classic trapeze act, but with a classic Cirque du Soleil twist. It has essentially men's parallel bars in between two cradles. And what makes it unique is that swinging action, there's so much momentum and so much distance covered by the bateau. It makes it really tricky for the porters and the flyers to find exactly the right timing. The role, I would assume, would be a comet, the red-coated porters who help control the boat's momentum. But before I would join the bateau team, Coach Tom Otis and Didier Antoine, the bateau's captain, literally showed me the ropes. Beginning with a safety line. We call these okay. carabiners. Yes. Okay. I gotta take these off. The only way up to the bateau is a rope ladder, and a flimsy one at that. Okay, don't be scared. Okay. You gotta pull it, I hold you. Okay. Hello. Atta girl, now I'm gonna let you go. You're getting a little more weight from DDA. How are you feeling? Okay. Breathe. Breathe. Good, it's coming. Doing great, Joe. I feel like I'm gonna slide Let's down. You need a rest. I won't do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I feel like I'm done enough. Okay. I felt like I was slipping because as DDA gripped my wrist, the blood flow was reduced to my hands. It may not have been 60,000 feet high in a U2 plane, but for this, it was high enough. <sighs> that was incredibly cool, but it's unbelievably difficult. <laughs> When we come back, I go from costuming to makeup to the stage for a special performance with Cirque du Soleil. Behind Closed Doors will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Having admired the bateau performance from the audience, and having passed the physical training test, I'm now ready to join the team on stage for a rehearsal, 30 feet up. The height didn't prove to be a problem for me. However, the momentum from swinging side to side to side is a whole other issue. One of the things we had to deal with, which we hadn't anticipated, was the fact when the artists are on the boat for an extended period of time, the swinging is some of the artists was making them nauseous. Whoa! <laughs> It took 13 months to create, perfect, and train for this act alone. It's over in less than six minutes. Yeah. Wow! Is it scarier, a lot scarier, when the thing is moving? At the beginning, it's really scary because nobody made this kind of act before. If you start too soon or too late, you might fly in the catcher and hit the catcher or yourself. Obviously, this has happened if you, yeah. if you yeah, wanted yeah. to be able to talk yeah. about it. And we fall, we fall, we fall, but I mean, that's why we, we train, you know, three or four times a week as well, to make sure that we're perfect when the show begins. <laughs> Next step, wardrobe. Julie Rodham would fit me for my Comet costume. And when you're up on the bateau and you're swinging on the bateau, the skirt flies out really beautifully. Each outfit is hand-sewn, and mine must be altered to accommodate the safety harness I was required to wear on the boat. Am I a comet? Almost, so you need to try the wig on. Okay. Just hold the front edge, and then I'll slide it over you. Okay? Do you feel more like a comet now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I need my white makeup. Every person has makeup specifically designed for their character. Mine took 45 minutes to apply, but with experience, they can get the whole process down to 15. Showtime! In virtual darkness, the Bateau team assembles backstage behind closed doors to ascend to the boat for our special performance. The first step, climbing the rope ladder. 
Then, before I had time to think about it, it was showtime, and we sailed into the bright lights. My job is to steady the boat as the athletes work on the parallel bars. Come on, man. Come on. Hi, sir. The rehearsal paid off. I'm so focused on my job, my stomach is just fine. Push, come on. Come on. For the second part of the act, we had to get the boat swinging. What the audience sees from the front of the stage is extraordinary. Up here, it's intimidating and a little scary, as these artists fly by just inches away. Their precision is even more impressive close up. I felt like I was right in the middle of an Olympic gymnastics competition. The bateau performance is over too soon, and the only way off the boat is straight down. It is now time for me to exit center stage. I was there in an instant, and so was the safety diver. It was just incredibly fun. <laughs> you guys were the best. You were great. My team had one last surprise, their initiation ritual. Behind closed doors and underwater, the Cirque du Soleil. I'd like to extend my personal thanks to everyone who helped us gain unprecedented access to make this special possible. Please join us next time when once again we go behind closed doors. I'm Joan London. Good evening, America.